good evening. Poker Tonight has gathered up all of the details on all of the hot summer tournaments going on right now in Sin City. The Bellagio Cup is in full swing downstairs in the Fontana Lounge. So far, only one winner has been crowned, and another one will be crowned tonight with the conclusion of the $2,500 No Limit event today. We're back in the Fontana Lounge on day three of the Bellagio Cup three tournament series. Last night, they crowned their first winner on event number one's $1,500 No Limit event, and that winner was Jonathan Rustra. Currently, event number two's final table is playing out right behind us. There are nine players left, and first place is nearly $109,000. Event number three started at one, and it's another $2,500 No Limit event. 78 players started the field, but now there's only about 33 players left, and they're going to play down to its final table today that will start tomorrow at four. So make sure you check back to Card Player TV and CardPlayer.com for live updates to find out who wins. I think that reporter's got a really bright future. For up-to-date information on all the Bellagio Cup events, be sure to stay tuned to Card Player TV. We'll be at the final tables talking to the people that made it there, and of course, we'll let you know who came out on top. One player who always seems to come out on top is Phil Helmuth. And as you all know by now, he recently won his 11th World Series of Poker bracelet. Helmuth sat down with John Friedberg to talk about taking down his 11th bracelet. Check out today's episode of Stacking Chips to see exactly what Helmuth had to say. At the World Series of Poker, the $5,000 buy-in No Limit Hold'em Tournament began today at noon. Current chip leader is Tex Barch, closely followed by Max Pescatori in second place. Other big names in the field are Kathy Liebert, Scotty Wynn, Chris Jesus Ferguson, and Phil Ivey. Now there are three final tables at the Rio today, and one of them was the $2,500 No Limit event. Lars Bonding went into that tournament as the chip leader, and Devin Porter was in second chip position. Also at the table is Elke Graspillier and Humberto Brennis. The current chip leader is Marcus Obser, and the total prize pool is over $2.3 million, which was built by a tournament field of over 1,000 people. Now the $2,000 buy-in seven-card stud high-low eight-or-better tournament also plays its final table today. The chip leader going in was Steve Grabowski. But after some play, the current chip leader is 2004 main event champion Greg Raymer. The total prize pool is over $600,000, which was built by 340 entrants. And the third final table going on at the Rio today is the No Limit Hold'em Shootout final table. This was a two-day event. Today's day two. All of the players at the final table beat out two tables yesterday to make it here. 900 players began, and there are currently only eight remaining. Pros at the final table include Daniel Negreanu and Eric Lindgren. First place prize money is just over a quarter of a million dollars. The tournament this year for the World Series of Poker at the Rio have had such great turnouts that some of the tables had to be played outside in a tent. Earlier today, Jeff Madsen stopped by our studio to discuss these matters and having to play outside, as well as to revel in his first cash at this year's WSOP. Um, so far, uh, I've been struggling a little bit, but I finally got my first cash yesterday, so that gives me a little bit of confidence. Um, I wish I could have final tabled the event, but, you know, um, I think I'm going to do well from here. And which event did you cash? Uh, the stud high-low. Okay. Thank so you. I'm kind of happy that it's like a mixed event, and I'm playing all the games well, I think, right now. So I'll get a few more caches. So have you had a lot of experience over the pl past year playing more games than No Limit Hold'em? Um, to be honest, I've played a lot more No Limit in the last year. Just most of the tournament circuit is No Limit. But, you know, I throw a little Omaha and stud in there a little bit. But, um... I think more importantly than like playing different games, just playing tournaments, mm -hmm. and I, I get a lot of tournament experience, so it kind of transfers over to whatever game you're playing. So what do you think about this year's World Series? A lot of people have a lot of opinions. What's yours? Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, it, it's okay, but I think a lot of stuff that uh, isn't being run that well, I mean, I have a couple complaints, but you know, I mean... What's it, your major complaint? What's the biggest thing that you just don't just, think is I mean, I, I've seen a lot of like, a lot of disorganization kind of with... Uh, a lot of rulings with tournament directors, like, you know, I feel like they're not very on top of their stuff this year. And um, and also the tent outside, I was playing in a tournament like a week was ago. It and it was it was hot and it was really windy and the entire building was shaking back and forth. And I was actually, everybody in the room was actually pretty scared. So I didn't, I didn't yeah. understand why. Um, to put up that know. much money and play in a tent. Yeah, and it was, it was pretty bad. So, you know, things like that, but... For the most part, I mean, it's tough when you have thousands of people and everybody is, you know, so what are you going to do, I guess? What's the biggest difference from last year, in your opinion? Mm, the difference, um, it's it's similar. I mean, I feel like there's, like, more going on, so it's maybe tougher to handle. And, like, I think, honestly, they're less on top of their stuff this year, just to be honest. So do you think you're going to walk with another bracelet at the conclusion of this World Series? 
Um, yeah, I'm going to say yes. I mean, I'm, I'm playing right now and I have confidence, so we'll see. I'm playing in 45 minutes and I feel good about this event, 5,000 no limit, so we'll see how that one goes. So what do you think about Bill Arrakis stealing your record, becoming the youngest <laughs> bracelet winner? Did you think it was going to happen since you that were bastard. so young? Um, you know, I, like, I, I kind of figured it would happen eventually. Like, I had about, a, you know, people had about a month to break it, okay. but for it to happen, like, the first tournament was kind of ridiculous, but, you know, I, Have you met Bill Arrakis? Um, I, I said hi to him, like, okay. before he won, and I told him, like, you know, this changes your life, so, like, I was trying to make him a little nervous, but, you know, I kind of felt like he was going to do it, so, he's a good player from what I hear. You think someone will beat his record? I think it's, what, 21 <laughs> years, 9 or 10 days? 10 days. Uh, well, when I broke, broke it, I was thinking it would take a while, so, you know, if I say no, it won't be broken, I mean, I'm sure it'll be broken in, like, two days or something, you know, like, there's so many good yeah. young players out right now, so... I think eventually, even though it's 10 days, it's, you know, it'll take a while, though. There's probably people who aren't 21 right now that will be 21 by the main event if yeah. they're coming out. Yeah, seriously. I mean, it could take, like, 20 years, to be honest. But yeah. So what do you think about the turnout for this year's World Series? There's still really big fields. I mean, in spite of everything that's going on with online poker legislature, there's still a huge turnout at, yeah. at, at the Rio. Yeah, I mean, there's still, uh, it seems like there's a lot more people in each tournament. Like, every tournament's, like, setting a record, like, the biggest limit tournament, the biggest, like, so, um, I think the main event will probably get less people just because of the whole online poker thing. But What's your guess for the main um, event? Um, I'd say it probably dropped to around like 6,000. It's still like a huge number, but I don't really see how it could, it could get as many people. Because, you know, people who like win packages online, they, don't, uh, they can't legally make them go play a tournament, so a lot of them will probably just take the money. So, I'd say about five to 6,000. So, how many more events are you planning on playing in this year? Mm, well, how many more days are left? I guess I, play uh, I think like, we're on. I think we're at event number eighteen today. Eighteen. So I mean, I play. I'm playing every day. Sometimes I play twice a day when I bust out early. So I don't know. Do the math. A lot. You don't find it I exhausting? Like if you bust out one day, you'll be back <laughs> the next day in another tournament. It's so exhausting, but you know, you kind of gotta like. You know, I'm only halfway through. I'll be more exhausted later. But you kind of gotta put it out of your mind and just play. You know, it's the World Series, and I want to win another bracelet. So you know, it's just about like going every day and putting in the work and. It's tough, you know, like playing two days of stud high-low yeah. and then getting, like, 25th. I mean, it's it's a grind, but, you know, it's fun. It's a World Series. So have you, are you not going out as much, not really partying, like, mm -hmm. buckling down? It's World Series time. It's work time? Yeah, I mean, I probably would be partying if I had, like, but I'm playing to, like, pretty late every night. So, yeah, I've definitely toned it down for now. Jeff Madsen is a prime example of the new generation that's taking the poker world by storm. He's been on top of the chip counts ever since his last year's performance where he won two World Series of Poker bracelets. Another pro who had quite a showing at last year's World Series of Poker with four caches, including a 63rd place finish in the main event, was Brian the Icon Mikon. Known as King of the Degenerates, Mikon is almost as big of a gossip as he is a poker player. He came into the Poker Tonight studio to share some of the gossip on the poker world. Welcome to Card Player TV. I'm Brian Mikon from Never Win Poker. And uh, I'm here to give you the gossip update for the World Series. Eskimo Clark. Eskimo Clark, a uh, good friend. I uh, always see him in the satellite area, you know, the, for the, where all the broke degenerates hang out. But uh, Eskimo Clark went uh, donk down in the uh, seven stud eight or better le last night. He was about 45 minutes into the level one. We just started. And all of a sudden, the tournament director called a 15-minute break, and sure enough, we look over, and Eskimo is just laying on the floor. Good news, though, he was waving to the crowd on the way out in the EMT uh, van, and uh, they did refund his buy-in, just in case anyone out there is wondering. Um, 45 minutes into the tournament, so if you're ever really low on chips, just you know, take a dive, tell them that you had a heat stroke or something, and you, know, you can probably get your buy-in back from the Rio. Other World Series of Poker gossip this year, one Brandy Hawbaker, as I'm sure all of the nerds looking on the internet uh, want to know about, um, she had, I believe, one cash this year. I'm not, I have no clue how she scraped up the money to, uh, to get in that event, but uh, rumor has it that, uh, I, or not rumor, but uh, Mr. One David Skolansky is, uh, has been on her side the entire time that she's been walking around the Rio. And, uh, well, it look, appears to be at least coaching, who knows, maybe bankrolling, and then, uh, you know, I don't know, I'll let your imagination run run wild from there. Big shout to my friends Dustin Wolf and Genocide. Uh, congratulations on dating for a few weeks. That was good stuff. It was real fun for the internet. She still is number one on his MySpace, so, you know, you know what that says. That's like, 
That's like as good as pretty much the ring these days. Genocide did say she was going to play the main event in lingerie, and I, for one, can't wait to see it. I want to. I want to know. One, I want to see it, and two, I want to see if she has the balls to do it. I might play the the main event in lingerie too. I would, by the way, I would trade places with Joe Seabach. Seabach, if you're out there, I will. I will switch with you right now. I'm sorry, Joe Seabach is like, yeah, you can't. You can't get better than that. Just gins every tournament. Every tournament, just gin again. Like, all right, you win. I left the Rio just now. Joe Seabach was heads up in his first table to shoot out. I guarantee you he won. 100% he won his table. And he like gets, he like scoops infinite women too. Like, you know, didn't you hear? Like, dude, Seabach's a pimp. I ain't even gonna say anything so he doesn't get mad at me. Get his dad on me. Thanks for listening to The Gossip. Brian Mikon from Never Win Poker. For Card Player TV. Take it easy, see you at the Rio. <laughs> you can get money, you can't get looks like this. Now, Mikon seems to know what's going on in the poker underworld, but his views don't necessarily reflect those of card players. <laughs> but they're still, nonetheless, insightful. That's all for this episode of Poker Tonight, but be sure to check back tomorrow for a brand new episode. Good night, everybody.